Cashing feelings for FWB, she leaves in a few weeks. I'm a male in my late 20s with a history of difficult relationships. My first significant relationship was in high school, where I learned my then girlfriend had been abused by a close family member. This deeply affected me. Her family didn't support her, so she spent most of her time with me. It weighed heavily on me to the point of personal detriment. I realized too late the toll it was taking and ended it to heal myself. I remained single for well over two years after that. Then, I dated my best friend's sister. It was a roller coaster relationship with long distance challenges, ups and downs. I spent some time abroad, which was harder than I expected due to irregular contact with my girlfriend. Despite discussing this issue, it didn't improve much. We survived this phase but eventually, my best friend drove a wedge between her sister and I due to personal disagreements. My ex and I tried again a some time later, but it didn't work out, partly due to her extensive travel plans. The communication issues persisted while abroad, and when she returned from traveling with a desire for more long trips, I ended things. I had some flings between the first time and second time but that didn't work out, it just did not feel right. Now. To the current situation, a few months ago, I met a stunning woman. Our first interaction was brief but pleasant. Two weeks later, we chatted longer and seemed to click. By chance, we ended up on the same group trip to a city, staying in opposite hotel rooms. We enjoyed the activities together, and I found myself enjoying nights out with her, which I usually don't. The first evening, we ended up in my room but she left before things went further. The second night, we talked and kissed. The first time in a long time I felt I could be myself. I felt like she saw me for who I was. I expressed interest in exploring where this could lead, but she stated she wasn't looking for a relationship, just companionship. She shared her breakup with a BF who cheated on her and was not ready to connect with someone and upcoming travel plans. We spent the last evening together it felt like coming home after a long time. We parted ways awkwardly the next morning due to other morning plans and bad coincidences. Back home, we decided to keep in touch discreetly and agreed on a FWB arrangement, this is a typical for me usual not open for this kind of stuff, my first one and I was curious, she made me feel safe in this situation. Over three months, we saw each other regularly sharing breakfasts and personal conversations. We connected beyond physical intimacy, and I felt it evolving into something more relationship-like, despite her earlier reservations. She began showing more affection, calling me endearing names, and we shared increasingly personal talks. When asked how I felt about our arrangement, two weeks ago, I admitted being relieved about an endpoint to our arrangement, but deep down, I felt she could be a life partner. This relationship feels different from my past ones, and for the first time, I can be myself, sharing inside jokes and genuine connections. With her departure two weeks away, I'm conflicted. Part of me wants to express my feelings before she leaves, but I also don't want to burden her, knowing her stance from day one and agreeing to it. Yet, I can't help but feel she might have feelings for me too. Or is this normal in a FWB situationships? Or is this how normal relationships need to feel? Story 2 How do I tell my fiancé that she is a terrible driver? I'm a guy, and I recently got engaged to my fiancé. She is the love of my life and I fall head over heels for her over and over again every single day. She is my safe space, she best friend, my confidant, my home. She brought back my inner child and has helped me heal from trauma and pain that she didn't cause. She's the best thing that has ever happened to me and I don't know how I got by without her for so many years. Now here's the issue at hand. She thinks she's a really good driver. Anytime driving comes up in conversation, which to be fair isn't much, she says that she's a really good driver. Since we were long distance for part of our relationship, I believed her at first. But from the very first time I rode in the car with her driving, I immediately realized the truth. She's a terrible driver. 
flooring it every time she needs to accelerate, braking really late at stoplights and getting way too close to the stopped car in front of her, and not being able to maintain a steady speed on the interstate. On road trips, I usually just drive the whole way and tell her I'm fine whenever she offers to drive and let me take a break. I really am fine to drive for long stretches, but I do get exhausted. I do this because being in the car while she is driving is very scary to me because of how she drives. Well, on a recent road trip, I was once again trying to drive the whole distance, but I finally had to tap out or else risk falling asleep at the wheel. So she began her turn driving while I tried to take a nap. Immediately, she floored it to get up to speed. Then, rather than just setting cruise control, she would floor it up to almost 90, then let off the gas completely, letting the car drop back down to around 85, then floor it again. Rinse and repeat. So, while I was trying to sleep, she was making the car jerk forward and backward. Constantly. I figured maybe she didn't know where the cruise control buttons were, since this was a different car than we usually drive, so I pointed it out. She simply said no I'm okay and continued to do her thing. I did not get much rest. Well, here's the issue. I have a nice car. Not anything crazy like a supercar or muscle car, but a nice car that I take very good care of. It's a manual transmission, and she doesn't know how to drive manual. She wants me to teach her. I agree that she needs to know how to drive my car in case of emergency, but I do not want her driving my car on a regular basis. So, Reddit, how do I tell her she's a terrible driver without it turning into a big thing? I love her more than anything and I can't believe I get to spend the rest of my life with this girl. I don't want to hurt her feelings but I genuinely don't feel safe when she drives. Comment. I got a little carsick and felt myself slamming on an imaginary brake and pounding on the cruise control reading your post. I would just be honest. And suggest lessons. I taught both of my stepkids to drive and I didn't have any grey hair before then. LOL. Babe, I love you. This is an awkward convo for me as I really don't want to hurt your feelings. The thing is, you mentioned wanting to learn to drive my vehicle so I've been thinking about that. I want to teach you but I may not be the best teacher. I get a little nervous in the car when I'm not driving. And I'm super particular about my car. So what do you think about taking some professional driving lessons? I would not teach her on your own. That's just one big fight waiting to happen. Well certainly don't use the words you're a terrible driver. Focus on something like, you have a very heavy foot when you are driving, and it can be very scary being in the passenger seat with you sometimes. I'd really appreciate it if when you are driving you could slow down and ease off the gas a little. My mother drives like this. As a child I thought I had horrible motion sickness in cars but as it turns out, not everyone drives like they're in a boat in choppy waters. I'm nauseous just thinking about it. I would also maybe tell her how her jerky movements make you car sick. Personally I can't stand jerky drivers they make me so sick so I feel or pain. You have to let her know though. Don't let her carry on thinking this is good. You have the perfect cover, sweetheart, I know that you need to learn stick to be able to take my car in an emergency so I thought we could start off with a driving school refresher course first, I am sorry if I sound anal but my care means a lot to me. I have researched it and the more extensive experience that someone has driving automatic, the easier it is to learn manual. Come on, it will be fun. Story 3 My husband resents me. How can we get past this? Context, we have been together for 7 years, married for 2. I have a chronic autoimmune disease, that causes periods of severe pain and illness, it's not always bad, I have flares of disease activity usually related to stress slash illness. I was diagnosed with this almost six years ago. I was also diagnosed with autism and ADHD last year, after suspecting I had ADHD for several years. I've since been trying to learn to manage these two issues, rather than ignoring the symptoms as I used to, which created a lot of anxiety and depression. We both work, 
though he does work longer hours than I do, he works five days with a long commute, and I am on April 5th days with a shorter commute. Over the past year and a half, I've noticed my husband starting to be less interested in being around me. It wasn't anything obvious, but he was spending more time with friends and work colleagues, usually at times slash places I wasn't able to go to for various reasons, work, illness, timing, etc. The worst of this was when he opted to stay out partying with friends instead of coming to support and help me when I went to the emergency room. I was in hospital for hours, and felt completely abandoned and alone. This ended in a big argument, and he promised it wouldn't happen again, and things between us improved a bit. Shortly after this, I suffered a major injury to my knee that would eventually require surgery to fix, and so was largely housebound for a few months while I awaited surgery. Because of this, he did go out without me a lot, since a lot of the places we normally go with friends are not accessible on crutches. After the surgery, I took a new, better paying job that is further from home, and very far from the areas where he works and our friends live, but things seemed a bit more normal. Fast forward to a few months ago, when I started to feel like he was withdrawing from me again. I had recently changed medications for my autoimmune disease, which triggered a severe flare of symptoms, resulting in me requiring a walking stick and a hospital trip to manage the pain. This is now improving, though somewhat slower than I'd like. He eventually told me he wasn't happy in our relationship, and ultimately the reason was that he was beginning to resent the limitations my autoimmune disease placed on me, and by extension him. He wanted to do more adventurous, fun things like we did earlier in our relationship, and felt that I was less social than I used to be. Due to the disease, I've also been struggling to clean and tidy, and this has been bothering him for some time, he does a lot of housework too, we share things but when I'm unable to even stand without severe pain, I do really struggle to keep up. I didn't realize how much it was frustrating him. He also said he felt that my personality had changed since the ADHD slash autism diagnoses. Because of all this, he wasn't sure he wanted to stay married to me long term. This was obviously devastating to me, and came out of absolutely nowhere, from my perspective. It took a few weeks to get the full list of issues from him, and a lot of poking and prodding on my end to get him to talk to me, and it did nearly end our relationship entirely. During this time, there were more instances of him leaving me alone to go out with our mutual friends. On one occasion, I was supposed to meet up with my husband and our friends after work, but it was going to take me over an hour to get there. Last minute. He said not to bother going all that way since he was leaving soon anyway, so I stayed home and waited for him to come home. He ended up staying for several hours longer, and I spent the entire evening alone. It hurt to have him tell me weeks ago that I was becoming antisocial, and then have it feel like he was preventing me from going out. This of course started another fight once he'd gotten home. After several talks about our relationship, we agreed to work on the issues we were having. I started trying to plan more fun activities that I can do, and I am putting more effort into cleaning and tidying up after myself, managing the housework better, etc. In return, I asked that he try to communicate with me more, because I truly had no idea that these issues were causing him so much stress. It's killing me that he has been letting these frustrations build up until he was considering breaking up with me. I also asked that we both focus on making each other our priority, because I have been feeling like I'm not as important to him as I used to be. We will also both be starting therapy. Communication is a struggle. I try to talk to him, but it's always me doing the talking and he reacts to what I say. He doesn't initiate any conversations, and rarely tells me how he's feeling slash what he's thinking. I know everyone communicates differently but I swear it never used to be this difficult between us. He gets frustrated and annoyed when I want to talk, and often asks for time to think, but when I agree, it just never gets brought up again. I have asked outright if there is someone else in his life, given the seemingly sudden changes, but he has vehemently denied this. Now, it's clear we are both making an effort, but I'm still terrified that he doesn't love me anymore, at least not the way he used to. 
Being resented and abandoned because of my disease has been a deep fear of mine since I was diagnosed, and I have told him about that. I even told him, not long after diagnosis, that I know he didn't sign up to have a disabled partner, and that if he didn't think he could cope, I wouldn't hold it against him if he left then. I didn't want to get to years down the road, married, etc., before he decided he couldn't cope. I realize how difficult it must be to be in a relationship with me, with all the issues I have, but these are things I can't change. I don't want to be sick, but I am. I don't have a choice. He does have a choice. I have started to write this post dozens of times over the last few weeks, and deleted every draft because I'm worried what people will say, worried about my husband finding it, worried I'm just overreacting. Please help me, brains of Reddit. I love my husband with all my heart, and I would do anything for him. I'm scared that he can't love me the way he used to, and I'm scared that it's because of my disease and neurodivergences, two things that I can't change about myself. How can we fix this? Have my issues ruined our marriage before it even really started?